Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India this lecture with a thought process, true happiness cannot be gained by self gratification rather by self annihilation. That was the thing what was followed in our country maybe 100 years back, but today with the market forces we are doing gratification. Okay. So, let us now get back to what we learned in the last lecture, we basically looked at the reaction kinetics. right? and we also recall how to use the law of mass action and in the end I talked about little bit uh, how we will invoke the collision theory to um, evaluate the specific reaction rate. But what we will do today, we will uh, now look at little uh, you know uh, way of how to represent this thing compactly and then we will move at uh, some kind of elementary action, then we will go back to the uh, collision theory. Okay. So, let us uh, consider how a chemical reaction can be represented in a compact form, right. You might be wondering why I need to have that, this is the thing which was not very important maybe something 30, 40 years back, right, to represent, to write the um, chemical reaction in a compact way. So, let us see that we can do that in a very compact mathematical form into nu i m i, nu i dash you keep in mind this is dash summation over all the participating spaces i is equal to n. And this is of course, the product side i is equal to 1 to n summation of all nu i double dash m i. So, what is the meaning of that is we will explore little further, because if you look at it looks to be little complex. So, let us consider a you know chemical reaction and for expressing it in terms of index notation. For example, if I say 3 H going to the H 2 plus H that means, in this case how many participating species are there? H and H 2 that means, 2. So, if you look at this n right, this n will be how many? It will be 2 right. So, that will be n will be 2. Now, I want to write in a very compact way. So, if you look at it is written in a very simple way 3 H S 2 plus H, but if I want to write in a more compact way, what I will have to do like uh, M 1 is nothing but your H right, because M 1 and M 2 there are total if I look at this, this portion first I am looking at right, like this is your reactant, this portion is reactant. So, that means, if I will consider this m 1 h nu 1 dash will be definitely 3 and what will be nu 2 dash 0, because there is nothing no hydrogen here in the left hand side in the reactant side right. In the reactant side there is no hydrogen right. So, therefore, because m 2 is represented in h 2. And in the product side, like if you look at this is hydrogen 1 H atom on the product side, therefore, nu 1 double dash is equal to 1 and 1 hydrogen molecule on the product side, therefore, nu 2 double dash is equal to 1. Is that clear? Not getting, it looks to me. See, what I am saying, I am just writing in a compact way question might be coming to mind why we will do that. Okay. 
you think about why we want to do in a writing such a simple very simple way i can write right let us take an another example right where you, you will tell me like what is this n here n is equal to capital n is equal to 3 h o 2 h o 2 right okay so now if i write down in this compact format then what i'll have to do i'll have to write in this way m1 is equal to h m2 is equal to o2 and m3 is h o2 right now is it right whatever i new one dash for h for the reactant this is for reactant right this is the product side right is it right or is it wrong this is not right ok so what is that new 2 if you look at o2 it is here o2 so therefore this will be wrong this will be 1 yes or no rest of the things is right are you getting yes or no so you know why we will write in such a complicated way because we want to you know simulate the kinetics for that computer won't understand this way computer understand in a compact mathematical form where you will be recognizing these spaces m1 m2 m3 like that you know it will be are you getting so for computer it is required but earlier days it was not now we will have to coding other things and then of course i will see whether i'll get into otherwise if want to you have to get into matrix format you know this will be easier to do that that is why it is being done I am just uh, introducing but it is not very important right so that you can really at least aware that yes it can be written in this format now above reactions are elementary reactions right so it will be generally used for elementary reaction because when you look at uh, some kinetics right we always try to uh, you know do use the elementary reaction but that doesn't mean we won't be using global reaction right kinetics we will be using but this, this is more predominant nowadays particularly with the increase in computational power people are going for uh, better kinetics for simulation so now this is of course your writing but now you want to write reaction rate you know in a multi step chemistry and there are several reactions which are taking place let me let us take some example right which can be written in a very complex format right which we have already aware that is reaction rate of i s species is summation of k k is your specific reaction rate right is not it and c is the concentration of m i m i is this all this spaces whatever represented and new i right now i will take uh, three uh, reactions h2 is reacting with o2 going to ho2 and h keep in mind these are elementary reaction there will be forward reaction kf1 and there will be backward reaction k r1 that is reverse reaction right reaction rate these are reaction rate the, you know um, coefficient or specific reaction rate whatever you call right similarly ho2 kf2 oh plus o and uh, of course there is a forward reaction uh, the you know uh, uh, reaction rate coefficient i have written and kr2 is the reverse similarly oh s2 um, going to the s2o and h now i want to find out right what will be the reaction ra rate for h let us say we will do that right how we are going to do for any species i want to do for all these three reactions because if you look at here the h is being produced right in this case h being also produced and also getting consumed in the re reaction one h is produced and also being consumed you know forward and re reverse ok and similarly in the reaction rate uh, 3 h is being produced and also this, this thing right but if i consider hydrogen only in the reaction 1 and reaction 3 right the reaction 2 the hydrogen is not there yes or no now i i want to write down i will have to 
do in a systematic manner, right. So, for that net rate of production of an element for example, H or hydrogen, right or a species rather I could have put it here species not element, okay. Species is a better one. Species means it can be element, it can be you know molecule, it can be anything, okay. Species, right. Now, if I will write down, let us uh, write down for C H as I have told this thing here. Okay. So, what it would be D C H by D T, I can write down this is being produced. So, K F 1 C H 2 C O 2, yes or no, right. I will be talking about first is production right of H. So, then what I will do? I will get into the reaction 2 H being produced if you go in a reverse direction otherwise no. So, then what will be that K R 2 C O H C O yes or no? Yes or no? Right. And here in this case the reaction 3 the H is produced in the forward direction. So, this will be K F 3 C O H and C S 2. This is about being produced and it is also getting destroyed. So, we will do in a systematic manner. Now, H is being destroyed, right. H is destroyed means how it is destroyed in the reverse direction. So, I will write down minus because destroyed, right, and K R 1. C H O 2 and C H yes or no right. And similar way if you look at the destruction in this reaction 2 right it is in the forward direction. So, I will write down K F C H C O 2 minus so this is 2 right and this is taking place in the reverse direction. So, this will be K R 3 C S 2 O C H yes or no right. So, just to make you familiarize uh, you know let me consider another uh, this thing uh, example uh, I mean how to write it down the C S 2 by D T will be if you look at this H 2 is being produced in the reverse way. So, therefore, what I will write down? I will write down K R 1 C H O 2 C H right and in the reaction 2 hydrogen is not there. So, therefore, we would not consider okay. and in this case in the reaction 3 the hydrogen is being produced in a reverse direction right. So, I can write down K R 3 C H 2 O C H. Then I will have to look at destruction. See destruction S 2 in the forward direction. So, therefore, I can write down K F 1 C S 2 C O 2 and uh, in the reaction 3 the S 2 being destroyed in the forward direction. So, minus K F 3 C okay, S 2 C O H yes or no. So, now this reaction you know if you look at it will be uh, if we use this compact scheme it can be written in a matrix format and the reaction rate you can substitute and then add together all those things can be done very easily. I am not going to show that because it will be little complex uh, and we would not be using in our this course, but whenever you are doing some kind of a programming and then simulating the things for simulation of the reacting flow then you need to look at it. So, let us now get into the elementary reaction rates what we are considering I will just dwell upon what I had also discussed. Let us consider a uh, 2 moles of hydrogen reacting with 1 mole of oxygen going to the product of 2 moles of water right. 
and this is uh, if you look at what is happening here if, if you uh, look in terms of breaking up bonds and forming up bonds in this case right how many bonds are being formed uh, in broken the reactant side it is nothing but h right plus h h right plus this is o double bond right minus o h h plus o h h right so that means total in the reactant side four bonds are being broken and in the product side total four bonds are being broken which is one hydrogen molecule on the product side therefore nu2 double dash is equal to 1 one hydrogen molecule on the product side therefore nu2 double dash is equal to 1 st single step chemistry Anyway, we do use single step chemistry particularly in gas turbine application or IC engine you know people do use for that because that is very complex right. We use a you know global reaction for modeling the flow provided your computational capability is very very small and also you want to get answer quickly right. But however, with the modern facilities people are going for multi step chemistry. Now, let us say that this kind of thing is really not occurring in nature, are you, are you getting my point? That means, how this reaction will be taking place? Let us say, you know imagine uh, that there is a uh, certain chamber in which hydrogen oxygens are there and you have raised certain temperature now they will be of course even if you are not raising the temperature they will be also colliding each other right because of uh, randomness of the motion and then it will move but if when you increasing the temperature what will happen it will be basically colliding with a higher velocity or a momentum so therefore there will be some breaking of bond or forming of new bonds will be taking place and if that is happening now what is the likely to be happen you know right is that we will uh, taking uh, some four uh, re reactions to illustrate how what will be happening as I told this uh, this is known as also global reaction right and these global reactions would not occur in nature it is only for our own convenience we have device it okay. But now, what will happen if hydrogen oxygen is colliding with each other, right? Imagine, then what will happen? It will go to HO2 plus H. In this case, what is happening? O2 is being broken, right? That means O2 is there, one bond is broken here, one bond, right, in the left hand side, right? Okay this is hydrogen is being broken right hydrogen is being broken and then it is joined with o2 and became hydroperoxyl right hydroperoxy ho2 is known as hydroperoxyl right yes or no hydroperoxy right and plus h that means one bond is formed which is likely to occur you may say that why not S2 plus O2 can go to OH plus OH is it likely to occur as compared to this reaction I can also have a reaction S2 plus O2 going to OH and OH right is not it is it balanced ok OH and OH is possible but if you compare this reaction I if I can say 1 A reaction right for just to segregate both the thing right that this is less likely to be formed why because it is in the reactant side three bonds are to be broken and here two bonds are to be formed so therefore it is less likely to occur as compared to reaction one but both are elementary are you getting both are elementary is that clear now if it is there h and if you look at h what we call like h O, these are radicals, 
and what is the meaning of radicals right radicals will be having unpaired electron that means they are ready to make a bond right okay see for example if you are having ego right you cannot have a friendship with other or a relationship with other right that means you are having ego oh, i am great so similarly if there is a empty you know or electrons are mobile or there is a chance that there will be exchange and then taking so therefore this h and o are very reactive and those are known as um, radicals and uh, this can be uh, very important for making uh, the reaction to happen right in chemical reaction these are the things are very important and then this h radical will be colliding with o2 because you know the o2 uh, is a double bond right so it is not that uh, easily to break keep in mind that in the first reaction why not o2 will break o2 will be a stronger bond right double bond so therefore h is likely to break are you getting my point here but h atom will be is a radical so therefore it will be you know more energy that it can break this will become oh and o in this case what is happening that again the single bond is broken and then one bond is formed right so the, and then oh will be reacting with hydrogen that is also possible right and then h2o will form and h and h plus o2 and uh, this is the fourth reaction what i am trying to discuss h plus o2 reacting with the m m is a basically third body right this is m is third body i have talked about that let me again repeat this uh, when uh, this third body this is a tri molecular reactions right h plus o2 plus m going to the ho2 plus m right and uh, this will be a inert body like nitrogen or maybe some other molecules which is not participating in this reaction particularly that is known as third bodies right and uh, this if you look at this is a very simple mechanism i want to illustrate and say that this is basically multi step reaction mechanism this is known as multi step reaction mechanism don't think that i can use you know this as a substitute for the global reaction that means hydrogen oxygen reacting in this pore this thing it's not that nowadays people are using you know uh, something minimum 20 reactions right to simulate the multi step chemistry for hydrogen oxygen okay at this moment but in earlier days people were happy with two step people were happy with four steps right but today because of computational power we could manage to you know use uh, more number of steps therefore the multi step reaction mechanism and whatever do even if you do the 20 steps reaction mechanism but still whether it is mimicking the nature or not that is a one cost million dollar question okay <laughs> are you getting are you getting and in methane uh, i had taken in 25 years back the something around 40 reaction steps for my PhD thesis, but today people are taking maybe 150 or 200 steps, right? And if you go for higher hydrocarbons, people are talking about thousand multi-step chemist, you know, <laughs> you know, reactions, or people are talking about 1200, 1500 like that. So, coming back to that, let us consider the arbitrary molecular reactions, A B, and we can find out reaction rate D C by D T is equal to K C A. Uh, a is your coefficient uh, stoichiometric coefficient and cb this is also b stoichiometric coefficient so right this we have seen but now keep in mind that this k is the specific reaction rate or rate coefficient whose units is meter cube per kilo mole second and so k depends on temperature and activation energy right i, I have not discussed about that but we will do a little later on not on the concentration because this thing is valid uh, for the elementary reaction as per the law of mass actions and for finding out this k right we will have to invoke the collision theory and for that what we will do we will be looking at kinetic theory of gases right 
and which we will be discussing in the next lecture. Then I will have to go back to the collision theory and find out the expression for this specific reaction rate or the uh, reaction rate coefficient. Right? Thank you very much.